Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of James, from chapter 1, verses 19 through 27. Hear the word of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and then after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever lo in, looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves righteous and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. There was a junior high Sunday school teacher of a class of eight ten-year-old boys. She asked them one Sunday morning, she said, would you give one million dollars to the missionaries around the world? Yes, they all screamed. So she asked them another question. Would you give one thousand dollars to missionaries around the world? Again, they all screamed yes. So she asked them this, would you give $100 to missionaries around the world? Yes, they all screamed excitedly. So she asked them one final question, would you give $1 to missionaries around the world? All the boys, well, all but one screamed, yes. The teacher noticed Johnny didn't say anything and had stuck his hand in his pocket. She went to Johnny and said, Johnny, I noticed that you weren't, uh, that you didn't answer yes and that you put your hands in your pocket. Why didn't you say yes this time? Says so Johnny looked up and said, well, teacher, I have a dollar. It's hard to give away something we have. It's easy to give away things we don't. This morning we talk about communications. We talk about conversations with those around us and with God. Conversations and time is involved in that. It's hard to give away our time. But when we look at our scripture this morning, I think the book of James provides for us some great wisdom that can improve our communication, not only with those around us, but those communications with God. If you still have your Bibles open, I encourage you to look back at verse 19 where it says, My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. These are three wonderful ways in which we can improve our communication. Three rules, if you will, that can apply to our communication between our family members, our wives and our husbands, our children, our friends, our co-workers, and yes, dare I say, even God. These three laws of personal communication are vitally important to us, especially in today's environment. I can't tell you how many times that we've been to restaurants and I, and I see family members, a full family, four or five children, kids and parents and children, sitting at a table, not saying a word, all buried with their heads in their phones. I've personally experienced my own children sitting in our house texting each other from across the room. You're in the same room. 
we've lost the ability to communicate. Heaven forbid one of my children have a problem and I make the awful suggestion of picking up the phone and making a phone call. What? I'll just send a text. That's not communication or it's not what we see in James today. So let's, look, let's just dive into these three rules. Three suggestions that are made that will help us communicate with others. First, we must learn to listen intently. Scripture says to quick, be quick to listen. And if we're going to be quick to listen, then that means we must pay close attention when someone is speaking to us. Just because we're listening doesn't mean that we're really hearing. We must be careful to not only listen, but to hear. My wife says I don't listen much, that I have husband hearing. I hear just barely enough to take an idea with me. And that can be dangerous. All of us can be sitting around the house, reading a book, playing a video game, whatever the case, looking at Facebook, that dreaded evil thing, Facebook, now I'm banned, so there you go. And the TV's on. How many times I said, did you hear that? What? The story on TV. What TV? The noise is there. The words are coming out. But we don't hear them. <coughs> We aren't hearing and understanding what's being said. When we discover that Jesus time and time again in his teachings in the scripture repeats words over and over again, he does not do that. Well, he does do that because the world's not listening, but he does that to emphasize what he is teaching. Many times Jesus in his teaching will stop. And as Mark 4 puts it, Jesus says, if you anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. I love the way Eugene Patterson paraphrases that in his translation, the message. Eugene says this, Mark 4, are you listening to this? And then in capitalization, really listening. If we're honest with ourselves, we can all say there are many times in our lives where we aren't really listening. Jesus does this very act because he knew not only do we have the ability to tune out some things, we have the very real tendency to do it. Good listening is a basic matter of concentration. The more important you consider the message, the more you will concentrate on it. I've been personally uh, experienced this and I've been with families when the surgeon has come out of the, the operating room and to talk to the family and you wouldn't believe the intensity and the focus that those family members and myself put on the words coming out of that doctor's mouth. We should all learn to concentrate that well on the people around us, not just the surgeon coming out of an operation. Is simply a matter of importance and concentration. But for far too many of us, and myself included, we become lazy listeners, as I like to put it. We consider the message eh, not so important. We tune people out, the very people that we should be most interested in. Our scripture tells us that we must listen to everyone importantly. I had a neighbor for many years that whenever I had a conversation with Ben, I felt like I was the single most important person in the world. Ben had the uncharacteristic ability to focus in on the conversation at hand so intently and so personably that he was literally hanging on every word that was said. Ben also could remember that conversation for weeks, if not months. That's how important the conversation was with Ben. That's how important he made myself feel. 
we should strive to do that, especially with the people we love and especially with God. The key to good communication is listening, and not just listening regularly, but listening hard. That is, we must concentrate on what's being said. The mark of love is, desi is the desire to listen to your family members, even if they say something casually in passing. When you really love someone, you listen hard to what they say, even if they're not talking to you. You will move heaven and earth to hear what they're saying. That's being quick to listen. Secondly, we must learn to speak carefully but honestly. One of my favorite sayings is this, a smart man knows what to say. A wise man knows when to be quiet. We should be quick to listen and slow to speak. God has given us two ears and one mouth for a purpose. We should listen more than we talk. Very few people in this world have ever gotten into trouble for, say, for saying too little. But people are all the time getting in trouble for saying too much, causing a multitude of miseries in their lives. Some people put their mouths into motion before their brains are even in gear. I like to say this, measure your words carefully. If you think by the inch and speak by the yard, you'll soon be kicked by the foot. One reason you should be slow to speak is that once you have spoken, like toothpaste out of a tube, the words can never be unspoken. The Bible is full of warnings about how our mouths can get us into trouble. Proverbs 13 says this, He who guards his lips, mouth, and his tongue keeps himself from calamity. God gave us teeth as a fence for our tongue. Who would be much better off to bite our tongue than to use it quickly. Proverbs 24 says, An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. Now you may think a kiss on the lips is pretty good, but it depends on who's kissing you. The Bible, in Bible times, a kiss on the lips was not romantic. It was the way of greeting only your very closest members of your friends and family. Others were simply greeted with a kiss on the cheek. Very special people, only very special people, received kiss on the lips. This means that you are absolutely and totally honest and engaged with them. When you are honest with your family members, it's like greeting them with a kiss on the lips. You demonstrate that how much love you have for them and how deeply you trust them. We don't share secrets with strangers, but we should feel free to share anything we need with our family members. A very important element in communications is the willingness to be honest and address our problems. We must speak the truth, but we must speak it in a loving way. We must be honest with our friends and family members. And most importantly, we must be honest with God. We must speak the truth to God because He knows whether we want to admit it to ourselves or not. He knows. Choose your words carefully. Choose your words honestly. And lastly, we must avoid using angry words. This last couple of weekends ago we were on an Emmaus walk. And one of the ladies on the walk gave a very great, one of the great talks of the, of the walk. And one of her little gifts were to all the, all the men and women there on the walk. She gave Mrs. Potato Heads. And they were cute, and I put it on my desk, and it's been very much a conversation starter at work. But the whole time I was sitting there, I kept thinking of that famous line from Toy Story, where Mrs. Potato Head had packed Mr. Potato Head's angry eyes. We must learn to be slow to anger. 
Anger and rage have destroyed more homes and more lives than tornadoes and termites combined. Some people have a hair trigger, and they can fire off at the very least provocation. There was a child studying history, and one night and his asked his dad, Dad, how did World War II start? Well, his father said, well, the Japanese attacked us at Pearl Harbor. His wife quickly jumped in and said, no, that's not right. It was Hitler when he invaded Europe. The husband scowled at the wife and said, he didn't ask you, he asked me. Why don't you just butt out? Well, the wife stormed out of the room, but just before slamming the door, she said, well, if you're going to teach him, you better find out the facts for yourself. The father turned back to his son and to continue the conversation, and the boy said, Dad, that's okay. I think I know how wars begin now. <coughs> a person who explodes with anger thinks they are doing themselves a favor by letting off a little steam. But like any explosion, it just wounds people. A person who constantly loses their temper or reminds us all of their suicide bombers in Israel. Oh sure, they, they kill themselves in the process, but they injure many others. Your uncontrolled anger not only with wounds those around us, but it hurts us too. It's been said that all of, the, of all the sins, anger is possibly the most fun. We all love to stew about something, don't we? Even when it's past, we still stew about it. If we have a problem with anger and rage, rage we need to find ways to express that anger in a way that doesn't hurt others, especially with those in whom we live with. When Dwight Eisenhower was a child, he had a very, very terrible temper. He wrote about a life-changing experience that happened when he was a boy. Once when he was, his father told him that he couldn't go out with his older brothers to do something, he flew into a rage and ran out into the yard. He began to pound his fist on a tree until his hands became bloody. He was literally blinded with anger and was almost unconscious when his father grabbed him and took him inside and spanked him. Later, as he was crying in his room, his godly mother came into the room to clean his wounds. She quoted this from Proverbs 16, Better a man who controls his temper than one who takes a city. From that point on, Dwight Eisenhower became, began to ask God to control his temper. He later wrote, if he had not learned to surrender his anger, control his temper, that he would never have been supreme commander and led the forces in World War II. And he definitely would never have become president. We must be careful, careful to avoid anger in our conversations. We must rely on God to strengthen us. We must be willing to listen intently to those around us. We must be willing and able and hearing what God has to say for us. God will speak to us in every situation. It's up to us to listen. It's up to us to want to hear. And I think that's a, a major part of what we're talking about today. Far too many of us have a relationship with God. But we don't give the time needed for God. We don't allow Him to speak to us, and we don't hear what He has to say in our lives. Communication for us is not a luxury. It is an absolute necessity. We must learn to take time to listen to those around us. Hey, I know the world's busy. I get it. Put down the phone. Have a conversation. Actually use words instead of emojis. It might be fun. Trying these three simple laws will improve our communications. Listen intently. Speak carefully. Avoid angry words. That's what God asks us to do. I pray that we can do it together. 
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this message. Lord, we just thank you for the ability that, that, that you have to talk to us. Lord, give us the strength to listen, to pay attention, to be slow to anger and slow with our words. Thank you, Father. Amen.